I have had people come up to me and say, it's better to use drones because if you use drones, nobody gets killed, <laughs> right? Meaning no American anybody gets killed. We, when we had the model drone on the, in the pedestrian street in downtown Charlottesville and we're making the case for the resolution, I mean, we had people come up and talk to us, including veterans who said, I saw drones save my buddies' lives in Iraq. And you had to say, bringing them home would have saved their lives too. Not putting them there. Not putting them there would have saved their lives too, and as well as the lives killed by the drones. Um, the other thing is with this idea that keeps coming up that the drones are a substitute for a worse form of war, the drones in terms of how the White House thinks are much more a substitute for the imprisonment and torture. Yeah. And when you, when you take these people who Bush would have tried to lock up forever and torture, and you say, well, it's cleaner, this is the language in Washington, <laughs> it's cleaner to murder them than to lock them up and torture them. Uh, not that we aren't still torturing and outsourcing it, not that there aren't black sites beyond Guantanamo, not that Obama has committed to not torturing or anything of the sort, but largely it has shifted from imprisonment to murder. Uh, and the, half the time they justify it as war, half the time they justify it as some sort of perverse law enforcement. Uh, even though there are no charges and no trials and people could be, easily be uh, captured and brought into court. Uh, and so the idea that drones are an improvement, you know, this is to argue that, that murder is better than torture uh, in, in terms of how the policymakers really think about, about drone use. Um, yeah, over here. I, I think from a Gandhian point of view, one would say that paying for war is worse than participating in war. And I think you could extend that to the drones. You're, we're, we're funding them. They're being used with our knowledge uh, in our name. Uh, we're paying for it. We're, we're paying for it. Yeah. Maybe not collective we in this room, but a lot of people <laughs> are, paying, are paying for it. Um, but paying for war is worse than participating. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that I agree. Um, I, I'm not sure that uh, participating in war would be better uh, than anything. Um, I'm not sure there's anything brave or courageous or noble or fair or sportsmanlike about participating in war. Even, you know, even on the side of the victims, even on the side of the Iraqis, who I'm not going to tell not to fight back, but on the side of you know, a, a, an aggressive bully like our government participating in war. I, I mean, when you get this outrage within the military about giving medals to drone pilots, you know, I mean, I do think that's unfair. I think the medals should go to the drones, which, uh, you know, <laughs> never get PTSD, never refuse an order, you know. But, but this, this notion that it's cowardly, that it's not courageous to use the drones, whereas if we put pilots up there, that would be, you know, more respectable, more civilized war. I don't buy it. I, I mean, I think it's exactly as evil no matter which way you kill people. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I'll think about it. Gandhi certainly uh, has a lot to teach us. So, um, yeah, way back there. Um, we, we occasionally hear people say, um, Gosh, these drone strikes or other kinds of attacks are creating more terrorists than they're killing. Doesn't this have to be a conscious policy on the people, on the parts of the people who, who run this country? Um, either that or they are utterly stupid. Bush said this war on terror is going to last forever. And with that, they had finally found a strategy for perpetuating war. I, you, I mean, you'd be surprised how stupid people can behave when they put on blinders and ideologies and see what they want to see. Um, I mean, people can do incredibly stupid things and believe incredibly stupid things when paid to. Uh, so I, I don't know that everyone involved in the drone kill program 
uh, is consciously involved in it in order to generate anti-American terrorism. Um, there, there is certainly less concern about generating anti-American terrorism in much of our government than I would like to see. Um, and there is certainly uh, documented widespread evidence of desire to generate enemies and to have enemies for war and to fabricate uh, enemies without which you can't keep the war machine going. I, I mean, on, I was listening to National uh, Petroleum ra Radio and there was a, a war, there was a war uh, company, a U.S. war company executive asked you know, and this was, this was a couple years ago, asked, what will you do if they actually end the occupation of Afghanistan? And he said, I really hope we can invade Libya. Okay. And, and, you know, joking, ha ha, but when people joke, it's actually what's in their minds. Um, and, uh, and, and so there, there's no question that there's a desire for enemies, that there's a desire for war, that war is never the last resort, that it's advertised. You know, I mean, when George W. Bush walked out to the White House press corpse and said, we want to avoid war in Iraq at all costs. It's the last thing we would ever do. We're working hard to avoid it. You know, 10 minutes before he had been telling Tony Blair, what if we paint a plane with UN colors and fly it really low and get it shot at? Then could we start a war and all, you know, all these harebrained schemes to start a war? So, you know, there's always, there are always those who want war, uh, and they need enemies, and there are no doubt those who just don't mind at all uh, generating terrorists. Um, but most of the terrorists uh, in the United States uh, have actually been manufactured by the FBI. There are many nations that aren't part of this madness that we're supposed to believe is human nature and inevitable and always been there. And it is, uh, in fact, relatively new uh, it doesn't go back more than 12,000 years or so, which in terms of human history as a species is relatively new. It's sporadic. There's always been a war somewhere in the world. There's always not been a war many, many somewheres in the world. Uh, war making has been abolished before. It's been limited in many, many ways. If we can, you know, the, even, the, even the human rights groups now want to ban the, the autonomous drones, you know, as if it's worse to get killed by a robot than by a robot that where a human was pushing the button, uh, which is a good thing. We should ban those. Ban any new technology that's going to spread uh, war, but we have to ban the whole thing. Uh, and so the idea that peace is a human right, that you have a right, you know, not just to get married and to go to school and to vote, but not to get murdered, not to have your house blown up. Uh, you know, ought to be fundamental. I, I mean, we ought to understand that with the, with the, with the women, the, the Revolutionary Association of Women of Afghanistan, that they don't just want to be liberated, they also want to not be bombed. Uh, because in fact, the right to life is, is, a, is a right in our Bill of Rights, in our Constitution. It's a right in the human, un, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, and it is the first right to be cast aside by all the human rights groups uh, in, in support of focusing on the right not to be tortured or not to be imprisoned and so forth. Uh, and I think that's, I think it's backwards. You know, I think you start with the right to life. And then you worry about the pursuit of happiness and all the rest. Uh, so um, I, I think, you know, nations like Costa Rica are going to have voices and lead the way. Uh, and to the extent that we can work with the people of other nations, we are going to get much further. I mean, the, the School of America's Watch has not closed the school, but it's gotten lots of countries to stop sending students. We, by working with people abroad. Uh, ten years ago, ten years and two days ago, the people of Vieques, Puerto Rico, kicked out the U.S. Navy. And there were Americans who helped and who are down there now, helping demand that it really get all the way out. Uh, and, you know, to the extent that we can work with people who have these ideas that are foreign to our culture, the idea of peace as a human right is foreign to U.S. culture. You know, we have to we have to do it. We have to 
bring those ideas. You know, we tried to we tried to pass a resolution at a school board in favor of the International Day of Peace, which already exists, just expressing support for it. Uh, and you had a school board member say, I'd like to be for peace. I'm for peace. You know, I'm for peace when it's Christmas, but I don't, I don't want to imply that I'm against wars. Right? And what he meant was, I don't want to disrespect my neighbors who are in the military. Right? I mean, good sentiments. Right? He's not saying I'm a mean person and I want to torture people. It, but if you expand the people you care about beyond your neighbors who are in the military to include the children in Pakistan you're murdering, right, then you take a different policy position. Right? Then you're for peace and allow it to mean, among other things, that you're against war. Uh, and, and that's what we have to get back to because we were there. Our great-grandparents were there. Mm -hmm.